All right. So it's a little after nine here. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone. Happy Manufacturing Day, uh, October 1st. Again, this is going to go all month long. I appreciate you all joining today's webinar, uh, Exploring In-Demand Welding Careers. My name is Joe Young. I am the Senior Manager of Workforce Development for the American Welding Society Foundation. I'm going to be your presenter today. And essentially, what we're going to try to do is share a little bit of insight into welding careers and the opportunities in welding. So some pretty good stuff coming ahead. Uh, little ground rules before we, we begin here. Obviously, as we move through the presentation, uh, please field any questions you have to the chat box. I'll try to monitor that as I'm going through. Um, if you have anything that needs clarified, just a question about some of the topics, just drop them in there. We're kind of moving through, we got about an hour, so I'll try to, maybe for the sake of time, if it's an in-depth question, I'll field it towards the end. And if you want, uh, I'll open the floor up there for the last couple minutes and we can go ahead and just you know, have a little dialogue on any questions you may have. So I encourage you to use the chat box. Um, finally, if there's any technical difficulties, obviously I'll, I'll do my best to hopefully resolve those and um, carry forward in a, in a timely fashion. So just hang in there, we'll make things happen. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's our agenda for today. Essentially, we got a pretty good lineup of content for you. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is really just share what opportunities are available in the welding workforce now and into the future. We'll have a good little look at that. What does a welding career look like? The types of pathways and the opportunities and you know compensation that's out there for you right now in the labor market. Starting your career, we're gonna kind of tackle that. This is a, a pretty interesting one. There's no right or wrong way to enter the workforce. We're just gonna kind of look at some of the popular or more common ways to do it. Um, those are gonna involve, you know, right out of high school, a little bit of formal training. And of course, you know, we'll talk a little bit about apprenticeships too. So good stuff on that front as well. Um, growing your career. So maybe you're already established, maybe you're really invested and you wanna learn a little bit, what's the next step? Just like in any career, welding offers a variety of opportunities to expand and grow and move up that, that ladder of success. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about the ways you can do that, or maybe some options that might fit you best um, in your career path. And then finally, what can the American Welding Society Foundation do for you? And there's a lot of resources available, and I want to kind of just spend a little time just sharing what's out there that you might not be aware of and kind of some of the things that could really help you move along in your career or even get started. So with that, we'll go ahead and dive right in. All right, so we're gonna chat a little bit about the workforce, the labor market, and kind of look at these opportunities that lie in the welding careers and what kind of demand is out there for them. So before we do that, let's kind of take a look here at what does a welding career look like? Essentially, a career in welding encompasses a variety of occupations. Those occupations are welders that are professionals at using the skill of welding. However, they may not all be titled a welder. So what that means is you could be a boiler maker, a iron worker, a pipeliner, a fabricator, and so on, or even a maintenance mechanic. But if you have the skill of welding and you use it in your day-to-day -day activities, that's precisely what you're doing. You're a welder or a welding professional. So they may be titled different and we're gonna kind of keep that in the back of our minds as moving forward, you know, the opportunities that are out there, you're gonna be using the skill of welding, but you may be titled something else that's related to that occupation. So, and as examples I shared, you know, welder, fabricator, pipeline welder, iron workers, you know, building cars, bridges, planes, the buildings we, we explore and live in, um, and, and many more opportunities, obviously. So moving on. So what does the demand look like? So these are the welding careers that we kind of shared. Um, it's important to understand that what we've done is we've collected a little bit of labor market data around those careers, those occupations, and we use six of them, and I'll kind of touch on that here on the next slide 
um, as to what we feel is a strong occupation that has uh, a, a demand or a significant amount of welding to make it, you know, fall into this uh, captured data here, if that makes sense. But bottom line is, um, it's projected that over 300,000 welding professionals will be needed by 2024. And that demand right there is all across the nation. And you can kind of see at this map here where the hot spots are. Some of those are driven by, you know, just population of the area. Some of it's actually the work in that area. Um, and as you can see, if you look at the Great Lakes area, the region over there with Wisconsin, Illinois, Chicago, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, that area actually all combined has more total work than California or Texas as a whole, which you can see there, they, have a, they are the hot spots right now. Um, obviously this changes with economic you know, pieces, the labor market changes, things of that nature. Um, but bottom line is, is there's a lot of individuals that are on the cusp of retiring. There's a lot of growth within the industry from new technology being integrated. So new jobs are coming about. And then obviously demand, you know, in the, in the market, you know, is creating this workforce or labor demand or need for welding professionals. And again, these could be fabricators, iron workers, pipe fitters, all of those titles fall underneath this breadth of, of demand. So if you want to learn more about the workforce side of things, there's a great little web page. It's um, weldingworkforcedata.com. It goes into all of the details and it really goes into a lot more uh, granular pieces of this type of information. I'd encourage you to check that out. It might be something that you would, you would definitely learn from. So let's kind of take a look. We know there's 300,000 um, individuals that are going to be needed. Where do those all come from? Well, we looked at the occupations. This is the titles that I was talking about. What falls in that occupation? As you can see, we use six that we feel are the most um, potent or the most, I guess, uh, accurate or precise to just having day-to-day -day welding and the skill of welding used in those work functions. Those are boiler makers, sheet metal workers, structural iron and steel workers, structural metal fabricators and fitters, welders, cutters, solderers, and brazers, and then welding, soldering, and brazing machine setters, operators, and tenders. As you can see, the makeup, of course, obviously, most would be titled welders, cutters, solders, and brazers, but you can see the boiler makers, the sheet metal workers, and the structural iron workers and fabricators, and where they kind of make up that occupational demand up to 2024. So pretty good stuff there. Um, very interesting. But those are some career paths you may want to consider. You know, there's a high demand. And it might be something that you might be interested in, like the iron worker or uh, sheet metal worker. Moving on. So let's kind of talk a little bit about salary. Obviously, everybody, they like to get into careers for uh, a variety of reasons. Um, you know, and right now, I would say any trade really has a great uh, salary component to it. Um, the work is out there if you're, you're willing and able to do it. I mean, it's the time is now and, and you really have a, you can grab the, the bull by the horn, so to speak, and really uh, make a, a great path and a great career for yourself. Uh, so let's take a look. So here's a few of the, the occupations, the six that I mentioned earlier. And really these are the median earnings across the nation. And then I threw the 75% the uh, annual earnings in there as well. And you can kind of see if you're a boiler maker, you know, that's 65,000 right out the gate. Um, you know, and you may, that might be um, after, you know, a combination of years completing apprenticeship. We'll talk more about that. You can see sheet metal workers, uh, 50, uh, structural iron and uh, steel workers, 54, um, and going down the list. And obviously, these are just median numbers. Um, there's folks out there that can make you know, well over $100,000 a year um, in certain career paths, um, things like underwater welding or specialized um, you know, fabrication or pipe fitting, you, know, you can really, you can really hunt down some money or if you own your own business. So the opportunities are out there. Um, you know, right now the average hourly wage is floating around $23 an hour. So that's a, now's a good time to get in. You know, you could really, you know, really make a, make a good strong career and you know, really hit the, you know, hit the bank good too as well. You know, if you want to move forward in that front. So moving on. 
So what kind of skills are we looking at or what kind of, um, you know, welders are in demand? So when we look, this is a collection of job postings and kind of what employers out there are doing right now in the labor market, what they're after. Um, obviously, we look at this and say, you know, welder in general is going to be a, a hot topic. MIG welding is popular. That's a, a welding process uh, for those that you don't know. Uh, welders, fabricators, fitters, TIG welders, and you can kind of see the demand here. And obviously, this is regional. Depending on where you live, the demand might be a little bit higher, but this is across the nation. So it's kind of interesting. Obviously, the, the MIG welding process is pretty popular. And if you move down, TIG welding is also pretty popular. And then the fabrication piece is also um, very popular for employers right now. So just to kind of think that, think about this as you're moving through this presentation. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you get your start and why this might be important as you move forward. So just kind of learning the certain skills that might help you get ahead in your career. With that, that's a great transition here to kind of talk about how do you get started? You know, wh where where do you go to learn how to weld? How do you even get involved or begin a welding career? And that's kind of a, a big question, right? So I'll do my best to answer it and I'll try to really help you find a, a solution or at least maybe answer a few questions along the way. All right, so where to start? You know, typically every career starts with some type of formal education or training. And in this case, we're gonna combine that with a hands-on and theory-based learning. The skill of welding really has to be learned. It's hands-on. Uh, you have to really just get underneath the welding helmet and practice it and, and learn it and be taught how to control the little pool or, or little puddle, they say, um, with the, the welding processes. Obviously that's, you know, there's, there's a lot more to it and there's a lot more career paths other than just being a welder. And we'll kind of touch on those a little bit as well. But here's just kind of a little map that shows, you know, a common way to enter the workforce. Typically this starts with high school. You can go to a trade school, a community college, junior college, you can go to university. And those pathways, when you hit the education system, then can lead you into uh, another avenue. Um, or you can exit high school and you can, you know, go right into the workforce. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You can be, you know, take advantage of an apprenticeship, an internship, or just learning from on-job training. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that approach either. Um, you know, however, uh, you know, I would encourage you to you know, receive a little bit of education as it makes the process of learning and moving through your career a little bit easier um, when you can learn, you know, it kind of speeds up the process, so to speak. But nonetheless, um, these are kind of the, just a quick little map of how you can go from A to B. Is it the map that everybody's gonna follow? Not necessarily. And I'll explain a little bit about that here in a minute. But let's start here at the top, high school. So let's say you're in high school. Um, you know, it's arguably the most important thing to earn is that diploma or your GED. And really that is gonna lay the framework or the foundation for a successful career in law. And if your school or your high school offers some type of course, like a metals program or a welding program, that's even more advantageous for you. If you can capitalize on learning that during high school, that's gonna really help you get ahead a little bit further. Um, and, and it can be very beneficial. And that little bit of extra time, uh, you know, in your high school learning career, I mean, that can be very, very, very important. Um, but nonetheless, it can also lead to other things. If you learned how to weld in school, you might be able to get an internship or a cooperative that allows you to do a, a school and work program. Um, and some schools even offer a college credits where there's agreement between a, a local college that you can earn you know, credits for you know, taking that class in high school. So those are things to kind of think about as you're moving forward. You know, I would encourage you to talk to your advisor or your counselor at your school to see what kind of things are available to you and just kind of feel out the, you know, what, what's around, you know. And we'll talk a little bit about resources that we have um, from the American Welding Society that might be able to help on that front as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit the next step. So let's say you graduated high school. Um, and now you're, you're looking to get a little bit more interest. Maybe you've never welded at all and you're just curious and you wanna learn. A vocational technical school can really be a great advantage. Um, 
they're typically a shorter time period and they're very focused um, at teaching the skill of welding. You won't learn um, the like math, sciences, English pieces that are often found at the college or community college level where you will be learning, you know, general education components, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that either, but this is just a fast tracked way fit, hitting welding, really focused. And some of these schools are typically um, focused on what's regionally available. So um, when you learn welding, you know, obviously some areas of the country, maybe, you know, shipbuilding might be a huge, you know, uh, industry in that area. Those schools may have, you know, the focus of learning how to, you know, work with that types of materials that's often found there because you can get employment rather quickly in that area. So that's kind of something to think about, you know, the focus of the schools, um, you know, other schools are, um, you know, they teach it all, but generally it's a good start. Um, but you're going to learn school, in school, you're going to learn the welding from start to finish and you'll get a good you know, dose of it to where you should be prepared enough to enter the workforce and actually, you know, be able to pass qualification tests or a certification test if you're trying to seek employment. Um, typically, these technical schools, I think from a study that was done, is about 33000 And that's a pretty good investment to make, you know, for from six months to maybe a little over a year, depending on the type of program that's offered. So, and these are typically, most of these are private. There's some public um, outfits out there, but we'll kind of, we'll touch on that a little bit more, but it's not a bad way to go. So I kind of touched on it, the community college uh, or junior college approach, and there's nothing wrong with this either. Let's say you graduated high school. Maybe you got a little exposure to, to welding. Maybe you didn't. Many public institutions, community colleges across the U.S. have a welding program or a metals program or a fabrication program or some type of welding technology program and they can easily be accessed. Um, the thing with going to a community college versus a vocational or technical school um, and you'll learn a certificate at a vocational or technical school typically and at the end of you know your time in community college or junior college typically you'll earn an associate's degree and that is pretty popular amongst employers um, as a lot of employers not only want the welding side, uh, they want the soft skills too. You know, can you, you know, communicate effectively? Can you um, function in a, in a work, you know, environment, things of that nature? Um, those are all important too. So it's not just about welding. It's also building your soft skills and learning other things that can help you move through your career. Um, but nonetheless, uh, most community colleges are going to, you know, in their region, wherever you're at, are going to focus on you know the welding processes that are in demand there. But they'll also give you a good broad you know range of it as well. And again, you'll earn typically that associate's degree at the very end of that uh, that pathway. So that's kind of the goal. Um, and then obviously combining your welding skills with a you know a degree can make you a little bit more marketable when you enter the workforce. So it's something to think about. All right. So let's move on here. So the four-year university. This is kind of a, you know, if you're strictly going into welding, this might not even be on your radar, but it's kind of something to think about. Or maybe you're not, you're curious about welding and you really, you know, are interested in, in what's beyond, you know, the underneath the hood every day and, and joining metal uh, together, you know, burning rod, whatever it may be. Uh, the university track really isn't a bad way to go either. Um, there's a huge demand right now for welding engineers. If you're curious about engineering and that's something you're interested in, I, I would encourage you to really look at welding engineering or welding engineering technology. It could be the right fit for you. But bottom line is, is um, you're going to go through a lot more schooling. You're going to learn a lot more of the sciences, uh, a lot more of the math, a lot more of the, the technical side of things and the theory behind uh, the science of welding. And, and that's important. And though the demand for these individuals in the workplace is extremely high and you can end up with a bachelor's degree. There's some schools that offer master's and doctorates programs. And typically that's more of like a material science or metallurgy approach, um, but that's highly used in welding. Um, you know, the, 
that piece is very important. Um, and there's also other career options, you know, sales, business. I mean, there's a lot of things that that four-year degree could take. Um, in fact, that's something I did. I seen the value in it. And, you know, I started off learning hands-on, running welds every day, got an associate's degree, went back and seen the value of a four-year degree, went back and got that. And it's something that has paid itself forward and, you know, been very, very, very helpful in my career. Um, but definitely something that I would at least have it on your radar. It's not for everybody for sure, but it's definitely something that, you know, if you're curious about it, I would implore you to check more um, things about that. And we'll talk about some resources that you can learn more about the, the four-year degree path and the careers that are involved in that. All right, finally, the apprenticeship. So the apprenticeship program is, is a unique opportunity that really does a couple things. So a lot of the, the apprenticeships are, you're gonna get paid and you're gonna learn. Um, typically, most apprenticeships want you to at least have a high school diploma or a GED. Um, some of them are union, some of them are non-union. Just kind of depends. Um, you know, I guess I would say uh, occupations like pipe fitting, boiler making, iron working, uh, millwrights, things like that are typically unionized and they have robust apprenticeship programs and the, and the apprenticeship program is an excellent opportunity to really build the foundation for your career. You'll be working with a journeyman typically on the job and then you'll go to school after work or a certain day during the week, depending on how the program is set up. And you know it's all progressive. So as you move through your apprenticeship, you typically get a raise or pay increase as you complete certain steps. You also typically earn certifications or licenses that are relevant to that field as well. Um, so it's really a good uh, outfit. I did an apprenticeship myself, um, although I never completed it. It was very, the value in it I saw was very important. And I would encourage a lot of people who may be on the fence about vocational school or school in general to go this route. Um, it's, a, it's a very good way to end up with a great paying career that you're gonna be very specialized in and you're gonna get hands-on training from a professional that's been doing it for many years. And it's, it's rewarding work um, and it can take you some really, really great places. At the end of an apprenticeship, typically you become a journeyman or a journeywoman. Um, that just is the, the capstone or the license at the very end credentialing you saying that you, you've mastered uh, you know, the, the occupation and what goes along with it. And you're sufficient enough to now pass that knowledge along to another apprentice or you know, work out in the industry. So something to think about, we'll kind of share a little bit more information um, here towards the end, but um, you know, I'd encourage you to explore those if those opportunities are available in your area. You know, they're a great way to get a, your foot in the door in welding and really learn uh, the next steps to it. All right, so here's kind of a cool little breakdown and I'm, I wanted to share this because I think it really puts a little bit of light into kind of the, the opportunities here. Um, you know, I know a lot of people gravitate towards the financial piece of things, which is important to do in life. Um, but this is just kind of a study that was done, I think, between um, one of the, the federal uh, college, you know, programs. So we pulled this data here that uh, shares some insight into the cost of going to school. And on the Student A here is somebody who gets a typical four-year degree, whether it's English, um, arts, or whatever the, the background is. And then student B goes to a technical school that we talked about, like a vocational school, earns a certificate, and uh, becomes a certified welder. And what you can see here is the pathway to enter the workforce is much quicker for student B. And the overall return on investment is about $341,000. And this is at a salary of $44,000 a year. Well, that could be that could vary there so, you know, on the low end. Now, on the student A here, you can see that that four years they went to school, they entered the workforce a little bit later, um, and you know they're making a little bit more money, but they're not at it as soon as the technical student was. So their return on investment over a ten-year period was only one hundred seventy-two thousand. Now, this is just kind of to share you know the opportunities right out the gate, it's, you know, everybody has a little bit different story. 
but this is something to really keep in the back of your mind if you're curious about uh, the types of careers. All right, let's shift gears here. So growing your career in welding. Let's say maybe you, you've already kind of started your career, you're already on that pathway, you're moving in the, in the right direction and you wanna bolster it. Or maybe you're just curious about, okay, well, I, I can learn how to weld, but what's beyond the welding element, right? You know? So absolutely, let's take a look. All right, so just like in the corporate world, um, you can advance in welding and do a lot of different things. And, uh, welders gain experience and that experience really bolsters their resume. And a lot of it is, you know, it could be working on certain projects. It could be um, just the, the knowledge that you gain, you know, like, you know, expanding in, um, you know, a niche market. I mean, all of those things are very important. Uh, but also, you can build skills along the way, right? You can learn new skills. You can earn credentials. And those are very important and also really, really help out a lot. So let's kind of take a look at what those pieces are. What are those credentials? And what are those things that you can earn? moving forward to grow in your career, excuse me, because welding really does offer quite a bit. So the American Welding Society offers certifications. You know, it's a very, very important certification to, to earn and hold. Um, basically a certification uh, is a document that states that you can weld and you can weld to a certain standard that's you know, based on the, the process that you elected to test to. So, Essentially, it's your welding, you're being tested, and uh, the weld that you made, you know, gets inspected, and whether you pass or fail, that's kind of the, the, the piece of the puzzle, right? It's a pass or fail test. Doesn't require any, you know, courses or education, um, you know, for the, the certified welder. Some of the other ones, you know, you may have to do a little book work and kind of, you know, uh, study up, maybe take a course or two, but essentially it's a pass or fail test. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about these other credentials here that, that require that. So one way to do it, you started out welding. A great way to move ahead, build your resume is earn that AWS certified welder card. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about where you might be able to find that. Sometimes schools, typically an accredited, you know, really you have to go to an accredited testing facility. I'll show you, you know, there's some information on that uh, you can find here on uh, American or at the aws.org underneath the certification tab and it kind of goes through and you know, explains this process. Um, but let's say you're you're interested in robotics, you know, there's a certified robotic arc welder, you know, this is a great credential to earn if that's something that your career pathway is, is leaning towards or something you're interested in. You can become a supervisor, certified welding supervisor, um, the big one here, and a lot of people is, you know, it's become quite popular, obviously, is the certified welding inspector. So um, that's a credential that I earned, and it opened up a lot of doors for me. I would say that that really does set apart um, the kind of the, your career path, and it really does give you a lot of options once you earn it. Um, you know, finding the right pathway where it takes you could be anywhere. Um, for me, I earned it and went into the education side of it you know, welding. And I really, really enjoyed that. And I still do. And that credential really helped me grow in that side of my career uh, profoundly. So typically, um, and then obviously there's the certified welding educator, which is also very important. Um, it's a great uh, credential to earn, especially, like I said, if you're going into the education side of things, you want to teach welding. Um, it's a good thing to, you know, pursue. Um, a lot of good, good stuff coming out of that. Um, and then, of course, you know, certified welding sales representative, you know, there's the sales side of things. You know, these are, you know, careers you may know how to weld, but let's say you want to get into distribution and sales. I mean, that's a great career. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to that. And there's a lot of need for professionals that can fill that role. So, you know, there's a lot of things outside the beyond the welding helmet. Um, but having that knowledge of welding makes you very valuable in the marketplace as well especially in the labor market to employers, because they want to know that you kind of cut your teeth, so to speak, you know, as a welder, and now you're trying to advance, you know, it shows that, you know, one, you know how to weld, but two, you know, other things alongside that. So these are credentials offered from the American Welding Society that are great to bolster your career and help drive you into 
a direction that you may be leaning towards and really help you get that step ahead. All right. So let's say, you know, the certification pathway isn't really for you and, you know, you want to still grow and, you know, kind of you know, keep moving forward, learn new skills. One thing you can do is really specialize in a high paying industry. Um, there's a lot of ways you can grow and advance your career. Um, typically, you know, working with exotic materials or, you know, crazy fabrication projects that are very, you know, precise or a variety of things, right? Um, you know, if it's a really niche market and you can really learn skills that are very, very hard to come by or very limited um, elsewhere, um, that makes you very valuable. Um, in fact, here's a little image. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a, a weld test that's done um, for, you know, for the pipeline side of things. And this welder is probably making well over $100,000 a year. Um, this individual specialized in welding a variety of techniques um, on a variety of materials and with a variety of process. That knowledge and that experience that individual has allowed them to get a a very, very, very good job still welding for a, a big project that required uh, an advanced set of skills. And, you know, right here you can see the, all of the missing pieces there are actually coupons that were cut out to test the weld. Um, and that's, there's a lot of welding there over probably 12 to 14 hours worth of just fitting and welding on that piece of material there. So that individual niche market, niche skills, advanced through his career very, very well, and, and has been rewarded for it. And so those are things to kind of think about. You know, if you're, you really enjoy what you do, keep growing in it, keep learning new things, you know, and I guarantee you success will be at the end. Um, and whatever that looks like for you, I mean, it's a different for everybody. Sometimes it's not all about the money. Maybe you want to live somewhere, maybe you don't, but that's, that's on your end. So, but the opportunity is there, that's for sure. All right, moving on. So let's say you've, you know, you got a little bit of welding experience. You've been working for a few years. You know, you kind of cut your teeth in the industry. You know, you, you got a good set of skills on you. Go back to school. You know, sometimes that's the right answer. Um, it's not for everybody, obviously, but, you know, what I can tell you is if you go back and earn a four-year degree, it really does help you move into different roles that may be appealing to you, um, whether that's, you know, engineering, management or business, metallurgy, education, all of those things are very important. And typically a lot of the employers would like to see, or, you know, or really just uh, require a four-year degree to go along that. Um, and it's important to understand that and moving forward too, because, it really helps you kind of make that pathway or build out, you know, your direction of your career based on if you want to do something. Like this. this is exactly what I did. I worked, I gained experience and, you know, I really like the welding side of things. I still do enjoy it. And, you know, I throw the hood on time to time to, to you know, do that. But I also saw the value and the importance of earning a degree. And that has been very rewarding and very helpful in moving my career in the right direction. In fact, I had to have a four-year degree to teach at a community college, and that was required by the employer, and that was something I wanted to do, and I'm glad I earned that degree so that I could pursue that career, and that's something that, you know, just be aware of if your goal is to get to, you know, uh, engineering or you know, a certain position somewhere, look at the requirements that may be, you know, for that position and try to map your career so that you're going to hit all the markers along the way. So you're lining yourself up for success, you know, opportunities that are out there. And we'll also talk about some of the things that you can, if you want to go back to school, what's available, what resources are out there for you, if that's something you're interested in. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. All right. So, like I said, we're going to kind of share a little bit of insight now as to resources available to you. And let's say you're maybe just getting ready to start your career. Maybe you're already in your career. Maybe you're, you know, just kind of curious. The American Welding Society Foundation offers a lot of great resources and tools 
for you as you work through this whole process or if you just want to learn more. If you're hungry for knowledge and information, the American Walling Society is a great place to kind of start because it's really kind of the, the benchmark for the welding industry. All right, so the foundation is a, the philanthropic side of things. So what happens in the foundation is essentially scholarships, grants, fellowships, and workforce development activities take place. And one of the biggest things that the American Welding Society Foundation or AWS Foundation offers is scholarships. In fact, um, since 1989, over $11.4 million has been given away in scholarships to students going to school to learn or explore uh, opportunities in welding. So um, good stuff here. If you're looking for a scholarship opportunity, there's a lot of funding available for you. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about how that process works. Um, you know, if you're going to school or maybe you're an educator, grants are also available um, for your school to help bolster your program and fellowships. You know, if you're you're in that, that four-year track and you're doing research, you know, the fellowship piece of it's also available there too. Um, so all good things here. And again, you know, the foundation is very, very, very good about supporting the next generation and incoming welders and getting more into the industry. So let's take a look here at the scholarships. There's a couple different kinds. Um, typically, uh, most of the students are just using these scholarships to earn a certificate. So this is that uh, vocational technical school track. And these scholarships can be applied to that, that funding. You know, like we said earlier, it was like an average of $33,000. You know, there's money available for you in scholarship to help pay down some of those costs that you might incur. Um, and obviously the certificate program is good. The associate's degree, 21% there. And you can see this is just in 2020, um, over $1.6 million was given away to students to earn a degree or education in, in welding. Um, and obviously that's, you know, we would be thrilled to have you, you know, throw your name in the hat, you know, receive one of those scholarships and have, have it help you out in your career. Um, there's two different types. Uh, typically, like I said, the, the degree track and then for individuals that are just want to be welders and they're going down that certificate trade uh, or technical training side of things. So I would encourage you to go visit aws.org slash scholarships. It's going to have all of the information on there, kind of the, the important dates. I'll touch on those here um, and kind of walk you through it. It's really easy to apply. It's all done online. Um, there are deadlines in place though, and typically you want to apply the semester before. So um, if you know you're going to go to school, you're, in, you're a junior in high school right now or a senior in high school, now's the time to apply. If you're going to go to school in the fall, um, it's always the, the following semester. So just kind of keep that framework. You know, obviously the, the date there is that, um, uh, that, that March timeline, that March 1st, which is which is the big one. Um, you know, there's some different uh, dates that are set forth depending on the type of uh, scholarship you are gonna, gonna seek. But bottom line is uh, a lot of them can be applied for online. Um, you can set your, if you go to AWS, the foundation page, aws.org slash foundation or slash scholarships, it'll direct you right to the online system where you can set up your academic profile, um, you can apply and it's, it's a really easy, straightforward process. You got an hour to sit down and maybe you don't, maybe you got a couple minutes, you can save along the way. Um, just do your best, check it out. I encourage you, there's a lot of money out there available. Um, and and it's, a, it's a very good opportunity for you to capitalize if you're looking to receive training uh, and have a little bit of funding to help pay for that. So good stuff on that front. So. Alongside the scholarships, we do have a ton of information about welding careers. Maybe you're kind of still trying to learn and figure things out. Um, maybe just trying to, you know, find out more information. I'd encourage you to go to careersandwelding.com. It has a plethora of content on there, all dedicated to welding careers. Um, and there's profiles on there. You can see the top 12 profiles that are very popular within, you know, 
variety of industries that all encompass welding, everything from a pipeline welder to a welding inspector to a welding technician to a welding engineer, and it has all kinds of information, um, typical, you know, work requirements, you know, all kinds of good stuff on that front. Um, so I'd encourage you to go, go there. Also, there's some cool tools on there. I will talk about this here in just a second, um, but you can find welding competitions, welding schools that are in your area. There's nice little features on there that are, are awesome for um, not only you as a student, but you know, for educators as well. So like I mentioned, um, Careers in Welding does have a school locator. So if you're looking to maybe find a school in your area uh, that offers some type of welding program, this is for only the post-secondary level. We don't have high schools in there. So um, this is just technical schools, community colleges, junior colleges. Uh, you can search by a state. You can search by your zip code, so where you live, and then just see what's in, in, in close proximity to you. And I believe there's over like 1,200 schools on there right now. So there's a lot, and this is nationwide. So there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff on that. So I'd encourage you to check it out if you're curious, you know, and that'll help you direct, you know, that point of contact, you'll see it all on there. It gives you a website. You can explore that. If the school is affiliated with the American Welding Society with their SENSE program, um, all of that information is also uh, detailed on this uh, little tool. So good things there. So something else we just introduced, this is a welding competition map. Um, if you're not familiar with a welding competition, and it's really kind of a fun little event that's uh, showcasing the skills of welding, and it can be done in a variety of ways. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. It's really a great you know great time not only for you know uh, educators, students, you know the community, uh, but bottom line is. We got a little tool if you'd like to check one out or you know maybe get involved with a welding competition uh, you can use this tool that's on careersinwelding.com and you can find a local welding competition near you um, obviously with the impacts of COVID-19 and some of the, the restrictions in place with all of that we've seen kind of a, a little bit of a, a shuttering of some of these contests but you know they are starting to pick back up so just kind of keep your eye on this tool as we you know get more information you know we'll constantly update this and add them so that you guys can check these out. But I'd encourage you to explore the opportunity too as a student. Um, if you can, you know, engage in a welding competition or partake in one, I think it does do a lot of uh, good for you as an individual, especially um, if you've never taken a weld test for a, in a work environment. Um, you know, welding competition really kind of simulates the, uh, the mental and, you know, the welding challenge ahead of you in some cases. So it's just kind of something fun I think everybody should experience and it's a good time. So check that out. Moving on, we have uh, also on careers in welding, there's articles and video content, great stuff on that front. Uh, it's a whole page, just all things welding. You know, you can learn more about um, career advice, uh, pretty much anything from certain topics that are all around welding, um, interesting things that welding involves. So there's pages and pages of content that are, are ripe for your reading. Um, and there's also video that's on there as well, of uh, just kind of all kinds of things from welding processes to stories of individuals sharing their career uh, path, all of that stuff. So I'd encourage you to check that out as well. All right, so um, WeldingDigest.com is another good uh, outfit to check out too. This is also content that um, is all things related to welding. It's a little bit more broader. It's not so much career focused, um, but it does have information on here that um, also ties in the technical side of welding, uh, you know, the business and sales side of things as well. And there's a lot of good content on there, but there's also a whole careers and education section available. Um, and I would, uh, you know, encourage you to check out some of the features that are published on this page as well as they're they're very good uh, you know pieces to, to read through get a little insight a little more information uh, and this is weldingdigest.com 
finally, we're, we're running up here on a couple last few things. Jobs in welding.com. Let's say you're maybe looking to enter the workforce or you're already in the workforce. You're just looking to maybe find a new career path or something. Um, jobs in welding.com is a place where you can actually post your resume, um, I believe. And you can also, uh, if you're an employer, if you're looking to hire, you can utilize this tool. You can post your job on there, but um, you can see all of the, the openings that are available. Um, you know, this is just a you know, compilation of welding careers, or welding jobs available. And, you know, there's a lot of them out there right now and the demand is high. So I'd encourage you to check that out. If you're, if you're looking to hit the workforce or looking to maybe change careers, uh, it's a pretty good place to start here. All right. So we also offer, um, if you go to YouTube, the American Welding Society has what they call the Academy YouTube series. And these are technical videos that go over welding processes. Uh, you know, you can see I partake in a few of them there, uh, but essentially we're just kind of showing you, you know, everything from, you know, safety and welding to the basics of, you know, shielded metal arc welding or gas tungsten arc welding uh, and to, all the way to technical stuff that's going to be, I, I believe that will be shared in like a premium feature at some point, but it'll go over like how to complete a AWS D1.1, you know, weld test on one inch thick plate. So it's, there's a wide variety of content available there. I'd really encourage you to check that out, explore it. You know, if you're kind of, you know, wanting to learn a little more, really curious about different welding techniques and the processes, is a great place to start, you know, especially if you're a visual learner like me, and you like, you know, some of the video content, this stuff's great. So I'd encourage you to check that out. And uh, AWS YouTube channel, and then uh, check out the Academy series, good stuff. All right, so careers in welding. So we were kind of wrapping up here. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but this is also kind of an interesting way to maybe learn a little bit more about welding if it's in your area. The Careers in Welding Mobile Exhibit is a, a trailer that goes around the uh, US 18 weeks out of the year and it exposes individuals to welding through virtual um, welders. Uh, in fact, you can kind of see the little, the truck, the tractor down there and then in the trailer, that thing's full of virtual welding pieces or um, welders and you can actually compete to get a scholarship, kind of a fun little deal, but anyhow, it, shows you the mechanics, the, the processes behind welding um, through a virtual environment. So it's kind of cool. It's hands-on, um, I mean, really interesting. Here's some of the events we have attended. And then there's also a few upcoming, obviously, with uh, uh, the Sunbelt Ag Expo. If you're in the Moultrie, Georgia area, uh, that's something that uh, you might want to check out. You know, I'd encourage you to go explore it. Um, the cruise and walling trailer is a great little, great little thing. And we're always looking for volunteers on that. If you want more information on that front, always feel free to email me or get in touch with me. And I'd be happy to, to coordinate, uh, you with the right individual, but nonetheless, um, that, uh, pretty much wraps it up for us today. I hope that this has been insightful and it has been, um, very informational for you. Obviously, the biggest piece of advice, you know, going through my career, what I would give you is, I would say, always be hungry for knowledge and never turn down an opportunity to learn. And I would say, never be afraid of taking a risk. Um, I think that as I look back in my career, you know, I've, I've worked in the field as a welder, I've worked in education, I've done inspections, so do a little bit of that. And now I work for uh, the American Welding Society Foundation on the workforce development side of things. Very rewarding. And I've taken a lot of risks and learned a lot of things in the process. And it's been very rewarding for me. And, you know, I can't say the same if I would have done something else. I think that uh, any career in welding, if you're the right person, and you're really passionate about it. You can go really, really far, and there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, with that, I'll open up the floor to any questions. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat box. Um, if you don't have any, I'll wrap things up here in a couple minutes, and I hope you guys enjoy Manufacturing Day, kicking it off, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the, the entire month of October this year 
and get to partake in many events offered um, throughout the country. So good stuff. So seeing no questions, uh, roll in. I'll give it another minute here and then we'll, we'll wrap things up. All right, well, seeing no questions, thank you all for attending. I hope this has been a good time for everybody. I know it's been great for me. Uh, I hope to see you all soon. Join us for another webinar. Take care and enjoy the rest of the manufacturing month. Bye.